for everyone's benefit, I thought before we start uh, talking about film, you could maybe talk about um, the beginnings of your life in music. When did you first start playing music? And when did you start really being fired up by it? Instructing uh, all children in Korea, South Korea, uh, begin to learn how to play the piano at a very young age. I also started learning the piano from when I was five years old. Um, I was very interested in piano. It was extremely boring learning how to play the piano. I really didn't like it. Um, but I fell in love with heavy metal when I started to learn the guitar. 그래서 밴드를 만들었고 이제 어, 메탈리카 같은 그 곡들을 커버하기 시작했는데 아니다 내가 직접 만들어 봐야겠다라는 생각을 했습니다. Uh, made a band and we wanted to be like Metallica so we were covering Metallica songs and then it came to a point where I wanted to create my own music so that's when it all started. 그래서 이제 작곡을 해야 되겠다 하고 했는데 사실 그때도 그냥 좋아서 재밌어서 했지 음악가가 되기는 별로 음악가가 되고 싶은 마음은 없었는데 한, uh, I liked composing and I only sort of um, began to do it because I liked it and it was quite fun but I didn't have at that point in mind to be a musician. 좀더 세상에 중요한 직업을 가지고 싶었는데 한 열다섯 살 때쯤에 제가 가족의 생계를 책임져야 돼서 근데 그때 또 음악으로 돈을 벌수 있었습니다. 그래서 직업 음악인이 되었습니다. Um, I wanted to have a job that had some importance in the society in the world. Um, but then at 15 uh, I had to take care of my family. They came to a point um, so I became a musician, a professional musician um, at work. Uh, well, I don't expect everyone thought Metallica would come up so soon. <laughs> but uh, since they have, can can you just talk a little bit about um, the 1990s in Korea and what, what was it like growing up there? What was cool? You know, what was in the cinema? What was um, uh, on the radio? How did you even find out about Metallica? Uh, Metallica was a black album. It was a black 라디오에서 나오고 그때는 카세트 테이프가 있었는데 그거를 그 그때는 그 한국의 이상한 댄스 음악밖에 없었거든요. 발라드 발라드라고 하시면 알려나? Um, Metallica at that time released an album called Black, um, and it was on the radio. And back then we had cassette tapes. Um, but back then in South Korea we only had uh, some strange dance music, um, Korean dance music. Um, you might also know as the ballads of Korea. 그랬는데 그 강렬한 사운드에 매료됐습니다. But I was mesmerized by the sound of Metallica. Wow. Um, and then, when did you first um, write a song, compose a song? Do you remember uh, what it was? Uh, was it a metal song or? 어 그냥 팝송이었고요. 그 그냥 그런 이상한 발라드였습니다. <웃음> it was a pop song, pop music, um, and it was that strange ballad sort of feel. <웃음> I'm going to have to look up this uh, the style to get a feel for it. And when you were you mentioned you um, became a professional musician to uh, partly to support your family and in doing so skipping formal musical training, I think. Um, um, what was the uh, what was the band? Was it a wedding band or or what was the the first thing you got paid for? 
어렸을 때 밴드는 이제 그집그 그 지불은 받지 못 아니 돈은 받지 못했고 그런데 중학교 때 굉장히 유명한 그 펑크 뮤지션들이 있었습니다. 그래서 그 펑크 밴드에 들어가서 기스라는 펑크 밴드에 들어가서 활동한 게 처음 돈을 받고 음악 하게 되는 것 같습니다. Um, the band that I was uh, in when I was younger, I wasn't paid for those uh, gigs. Um, but in middle school, um, I was approached by a really famous funk musician at the time, and I was involved with um, this funk band called Geeks, and that's when I started to get paid as a musician. 그래서 funk 음악도 별로 좋아하지 않았는데 돈을 받아서 좋아서 그냥 거기서 베이스 기타를 치게 됐습니다. I didn't like funk music either. But I liked being paid for it, so I was playing the bass guitar in that band. Fantastic. Um, I presume you came to like funk music, or do you still hate it? Ah, uh, ah. 가끔 듣는데 자주 듣지 않습니다. I listen to it sometimes, but I don't listen to it often. Okay. It doesn't sound like there's much hope of a. Gigs reunion anytime <laughs> soon, um, and I suppose after after gigs, how long how soon was it before you got involved in composing for art or film or where you weren't composing for your your own band? Uh, band 하면서도 계속 그 다른 활동을 했습니다. 그 왜냐하면 제의가 들어오니까. 어, 그 음악은 음악을 모두 필요로 하니까 무용도 영화도 공연도 미술도 다 음악을 필요로 하기 때문에 제가 일할 수 있는 곳이 굉장히 많았습니다. 그래서 굉장히 이렇게 동시에 진행하고 있었습니다. Um, actually, during the time I was uh, in Geeks and performing my own stuff, um, there were people approaching me to um, help them. Make music for their art, so it was a joint sort of um, pathway um, because everyone needs music, whether that's dance, performance, arts, uh, movies. So I was just continuing to work together alongside. Okay, well, this seems like a good time to ask how um, I guess you got one of your your big breaks, which is working with uh, Bong Joon Ho, and. Um, we're going to see a clip it's very soon, not quite yet, from Okja, um, the first film you did together. But do you know how he heard about you? And um, how did he get in contact with you? There was a film that was produced by C4OG. It was a film that was produced by C4OG. I thought that he knew me as a film that I knew. 그 전부터 그분은 저를 알고 있었습니다. 왜냐하면 아, 네, 그렇습니다. 감독님 그 영화 C4 C4 때문에 감독님이 아셨다고 그런 줄 알았는데 그그 그 전부터 사실은 알고 있었습니다. Uh, so director Bong, I thought um, he knew me from his work uh, C4, which was a film uh, released in 2014. Um, I thought that at the time, but 아 그분이 장준환이라는 지구를 지켜라라는 필름을 만든 분하고 친구였는데 그 장준환이라는 사람이 제 뮤직비디오를 만들었습니다. 그 뮤직비디오를 만들 시절부터 저를 알고 있었다고 합니다. Uh, director Bong is friends with director Jang Junhwan, um, who made a film. Um, this is a rough translation. Uh, Save the Earth. I think there's an official translation. 1987. Oh, 1987. Mm. Oh, okay. So that that oh, was. IMDb. Save the Earth and 1987. <laughs> oh, sorry. Save the Earth. The film. Uh, Save the Earth and 1987. Um, so this director Zhang, um, he made the music video for um, director Zhang here. Uh, so that's when director Bong knew about uh, Jo. Well. Before we talk in a bit more depth about your relationship with director Bong, let's uh, see a clip from Okja, which for those of you who don't know, is a um, story about a uh, girl who's in the mountains in Korea and her best friend is a, a sort of genetically engineered super pig, which uh, is in the process of being 
exported back to America for something uh, untoward. Uh, so let's see the clip. So um, before we even talk about uh, working with director Bong, we've got to talk about some of the music there because it's uh, I, I understand it's some uh, Balkan brass music in the background, which is a unusual thing to find in a Korean film, maybe. And can you just tell us the you know the how, what, and why of that? Uh, and yeah, which musician is is it um, uh, is it playing? Uh. 제가 저도 어렸을 때 그리고 지금도 세네파일이라고 할수 있을 것 같은데요. 그때 사랑했던 영화 중에 에밀 쿠스트리차라는 감독이 있었습니다. 그 에밀 쿠스트리차는 발칸 반도의 영화 감독이고 어 봉준호 감독도 에밀 쿠스트리차를 좋아했습니다. So I might not get the pronunciation. Is it Emil Kusturica? Kusturica. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when I was when I was younger and um, I was a cinephile, uh, cinephile, and I am now as well. Um, and back when I was younger, I used to watch um, Emil Kusturica's films. Um, he is a Balkans filmmaker, and I know that director Bong is also a fan of his work. Uh, Bong, Mr. Uh, 저기 Bong Joon-ho의 영화를 보면. Uh, 그냥 한 가지의 감정이 있지 않습니다. 모든 감정들이 다 켜켜이 쌓여 있고 그 거기서 어떤 사람은 이걸 느낄 수 있고 어떤 사람은 저것을 느낄 수 있고 굉장히 그런 복잡한 감정들을 만들어냅니다. When you watch director Bong's works, um, you don't just feel one emotion, you feel layers of all the emotions. So some people feel some of the emotions and some feel the other. So it's a complex sort of layers of um, all the emotions. 그런데 발칸의 음악이 굉장히 슬프기도 하고 신나기도 하고 우스꽝스럽기도 하고 어, 굉장히 복잡한 감정을 가지고 있다고 저는 생각했고요. 그래서 봉준호 감독에게 이것을 제안했더니 본인도 좋다고 했습니다. 그 이렇게 막 이런 씬에 막 할리우드 영화 같은 음악을 넣을 수는 없으니까 발칸 반도의 음악을 써보자 그렇게 제안을 하게 됐습니다. Um, and I thought the Balkan music had elements of sad emotions, happy emotions, funny emotions, and all the complex emotions. So I suggested to director Bong, what, what if we use this kind of music for this kind of scene? Um, and uh, uh, because we can't use Hollywood-like music for this kind of scene, and director Bong liked it and said, yes, let's go for it. 그래서 막 구글링을 하다가 어, 마체도니아의 잠보 아구쉐비. <웃음> Uh, I was googling and uh, Macedonia's Macedonia's Jumbo Agushebi. Agushebi. <laughs> 라는 굉장히 재능 있는 뮤지션을 찾아서 같이 작업을 하게 됐습니다. 스코페라는 도시로 가서. Um, so yeah, I, while I was googling, I found that talented musician, um, and so we worked together uh, in a city called Skopje. 
Macedonia. Is it Macedonia? Oh, yeah. The capital. There's a lot of statues there, I seem to remember. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, once, yeah. It's like the, the head of that country really likes statues, is all I remember. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, so you went all the way to Macedonia just for this one cue, because I think this is maybe a couple of minutes of, of Balkan brass in the whole film. This uh, scene itself was uh, approximately six minutes, five to six minutes, but the recorded music was about an hour. Uh, is that is that typical that um, you'll have that much material that you don't use for the small bit that you do? Uh, yes, it happens quite a lot. So your job's harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about director Bong because um, I know a lot of people in the audience will will know him, and I think he's he's done events here at the BFI. Um, so. When he calls you and says, I want you to score my next film, what do you do next? Do you watch all his films or do you watch none of his films because you don't want to be influenced by them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't watch anything really because, you know, I don't think it'd be helpful because I'm trying to make new material um, for him. Um, instead, what I do is I listen to what he wants specifically. Right. So can you remember that first conversation? Did you get straight away? Um, you know, okay, well, where, where was the film at that time? Would they, had they gone... Had they filmed it, or was it before even they had begun filming? You mean Okja? Okja first, yeah. 그 사실은 대한민국에서 찍는 모든 것을 다 찍어놓고 이제 미국으로 건너가기 전에 저한테 스크립트를 주셨고 그래서 왜 나를 찾아오셨지 하고 생각을 했습니다. 그래서 그때부터 근데 미국에 있으니까 어. 긴밀하게 소통은 할수 없었고 계속 스크립트를 읽었습니다. So um, they filmed everything uh, that they could in Korea and it went over to the US to do the bits there. Um, and that was when I was given the script. Uh, we were we couldn't be in constant contact because uh, he was in the US at the time. So what did he tell you to, to, to get you started? What direction did he give about the music? 그때는 아무것도 지, 원래는 굉장히 굉장히 아주 치밀한 주문을 하시는 분인데 그때는 아무 말도 안 하셨습니다. 왜냐하면 미국에 갔기 때문에 그게 아마 급했을 것 같습니다. Um, usually he gives exact, specific, very detailed requests to me, but he didn't say anything at the time because he was in the US then. So that was the more urgent, pressing thing to do. So you just saw what they had filmed in Korea, started composing sent it to him and waited <laughs> and was it e well how straightforward was it was he happy straight away or with okja this is or yeah was it difficult 옥자로 말씀드리자면 어 처음에는 꽤 순조로웠습니다. 어 그냥 제 마음대로 했거든요. 근데 좋아했습니다. Uh, for Okja, yes, uh, initially it was straightforward. I just did everything I wanted to do and he liked it, so yeah. 그런데 어느 순간 확 막혔던 부분이 있었는데 제가 그때 영화 음악에 대해서 잘 모르니까 약간 헐리우드 흉내를 좀 내려다가 그분이 어, 감독님께서 이런 거는 안 된다라고 하셨습니다. But then there was a point where um, I thought there was some sort of barrier. Um, I, I was stopped, uh, blocked, um, because there was a time when, because I didn't know film music very well, I tried to mimic the Hollywood style, and that's when director Bong said, it, we can't do it this way, this won't work. 
그래서 그때 얘기했던 주문이 어, 우리 음악은 이렇게 걸어가다가 이렇게 멋지게 걸어가는 척을 하다가 갑자기 넘어졌다 이런 영화여야 한다라고 하셨습니다. And the request he gave at that time to me was our music. It has to be like as if you're walking quite poorly and then just falling off, <laughs> falling over. Interesting. Um, so that's a fairly specific piece of um, guidance he gave you. And you mentioned he can be very specific. So what, how does he talk about music when he is being specific? Does he mention his artist and say, I want it to be a bit like this or a bit like this film? How does he talk about music? 굉장히 그 일단은 처음에 컨셉을 굉장히 많이 상의를 하십니다. 예를 들어 파라사이트 같은 경우는 그 스크립트를 쓰실 때 바로크 음악을 많이 들으셨고 굉장히 집중된 어떤 사운드가 필요하다라고 하셨습니다. Uh, initially um, the consultation of the concept is done quite extensively. Um, whilst working for Parasite, I know he was listening to Baroque music a lot, and he said there was a point where highly, con highly uh, concentrated scene would be required. 그리고 뭐 예를 들어 어그 어떤 경우 그런 굉장히 집중된 사운드를 찾아보자 하면서 현악기도 가보고 타악기도 가보고 뭐 이런 여러 여러 가지 뭐 어떤 때는 피아노로 해보자 이런 악기까지도 굉장히 상세하게 주문을 하시는 편입니다. Uh, for example, for the highly concentration required scene, um, he would say, let's try strings, let's try percussions, and sometimes he would go specifics into specific instruments, like let's go with the piano. So he's very specific. But never specific artists? He would never say make it like... 그런 것을 얘기하지 않으시는 게 어, 굉장히 그래도 도움이 많이 되는 것 같습니다. 어떤 그이 상황이 이 씬이 왜 만들어졌는지를 설명하고 이 씬에 여기는 이렇게 돼야 된다 이런 디테일한 질문을 하지 그런 아티스트를 언급하지는 않습니다. So he doesn't mention uh, many specific artists um, or musician. Which is which is very helpful because um, yeah he gives us um, ex he gives me uh, explanations of why the scene is is come to be like this um, and why this is detailed in such way and that explanation helps a lot. 그게 굉장히 상상력을 키우는데 도움을 줄수 있고요. 그렇지 않은 경우 그런 멘션을 하는 순간에 저는 갑자기 좀 막히게 됩니다. Uh, so it's helpful um, to build imagination um, with those kind of details. Um, and if, they, if there is a mention of someone else, then that's when I get the block. <laughs> so it's not helpful. <laughs> um, before we move off Okja, it's um, got quite a lot of diversity of location. You know, we're starting in the mountains, we're going to the city, then we're going across the Atlantic to, or Pacific to um, New York eventually. And... Um, the music's quite different, but how do you approach um, keeping the score consistent so you feel like you're watching one film with one sort of consistent score whilst changing it so much? 사실은 그것에 신경을 쓰지 않았습니다. 왜냐하면 너무 다른 그런 로케이션이었기 때문에 하지만 처음과 끝은 같이 가져가려고 했습니다. 처음에 굉장히 평화로웠던 순간 그리고 다시 평화를 되찾았지만 평화를 되찾았지만 뭔가 가슴에 남아 있는 평화 요두 개만을 연결하려고 했습니다. Uh, I didn't pay uh, attention to to that part actually um, because all the locations were so different. What I tried to keep together was um, the peaceful moments at the beginning and the end, so joining them together. Um, so at the end, it's very peaceful, and at the end, it's very peaceful, but there's something left in the heart. So it was kind of maintaining those together only. Yeah, there's some beautiful music, especially I'm a big fan of the beginning with the Rai Kuda guitar. But it's not available, I don't think, to well, I can't find it on Spotify anyway, the, uh, the soundtrack. So you should 
sort that out. <laughs> um, well, this seems like a good time to move on to um, your next film with director Bong, which uh, was a bit of a hit, I think it's uh, fair to say. And um, bef I think let's start with the clip and then we'll talk about Parasite. But for anyone who's unfamiliar, this is a story about a lower class family insinuating themselves into the lives of an upper class family in Korea. <laughs> An amazing piece, uh, a really long nine minute or so piece, isn't it, where they're kicking out all of the different members of the current household and finishing with the housekeeper there, done with the peach, uh, which he's allergic to. So when did Bong uh, call you again? I guess you finished Okja, that was 2017 when it came out. Um, were you in touch in between? Did he say, like, I definitely want to do my next film with you? Or did it come out of the blue? 그냥 그 어느 날 갑자기 한참 연락 없다가 그렇게 연락을 자주 하는 사이는 아니고요. 그냥 뭘 하나 썼는데 만나 보자고 하셨습니다. It was out of the blue. Uh, we're not really in contact much. Um, but he just out of the blue contacted me and said, um, "I wrote something. Let's meet up." And so, what state was the film in? Uh, when you first saw it. 그냥 스크립트를 다 끝낸 상태였습니다. 아무것도 촬영은 없었고요. He just finished writing the script, so nothing was filmed. Uh, so earlier than Okja, you got involved. And what did he tell you about the music? What he wanted? 그게 아까 말씀드렸던 바로 그 음악을 말씀하셨고 집중된 사운드. 이두 가지를 말씀하셨습니다. 그러면서 어 그냥 재밌었던 건저 집은 그때 완성이 돼 있었습니다. 그래서 막그 3D로 해가지고 저한테 막 자랑하면서 보여주셨었습니다. Um, so like mentioned earlier, um, he said two things. One was the baroque sound, um, and one was the concentrated sound. What was fun is that the house was uh, already already. Um, so he made a 3D version of the house, and he was showing that off to me. Sorry, the concentrated sound. What do you mean by that? 그래서 저도 그게 뭔지 몰라 가지고 여쭤봤는데 어, 스트링을 계속 말씀하셨습니다. 스트링이라고 하면 굉장히 작은 소리부터 큰 소리까지 낼수 있고 아주 평화로우면서도 아주 그 강렬한 사운드를 낼수 있거든요. 그리고 어떤 때는 굉장히 무섭고 기괴한 사운드도 만들 수 있고요. 그래서 스트링이라는 악기가 이 영화에 적합하지 않을까 생각했습니다. 그 네. So I didn't know what he meant either. So I asked him. Um, and he mentioned using the strings, uh, string music. Um, 
with string uh, music, you can control the volume from very uh, quiet sound to very loud sounds. Um, it can be peaceful but bold at the same time. Um, you can also be scary but weird. Um, so we thought string would be a good fit. 그리고 이 로케이션이 딱두 군데기 때문에 그렇기 때문에 굉장히 집중된 사운드를 원한다고 원하신다고 생각했고 또 이게 계속 밑으로 내려가다가 올라갔다가 내려갔다가 올라갔다를 반복하는 것이기 때문에 그런 집중된 사운드가 필요했다고 생각합니다. Um, because there were just the two locations, um, that was the reason for requiring the concentrated sound. Um, and there was the repetition of going up and down. Uh, so I thought that was the concentration required for those moments. You mentioned with Okja that uh, you kind of hit it off straight away. You provided some suggestions. He liked them. Was that the case with Parasite too? 사실 저는 맘대로 하진 않고 시키는 아 시키는 때문에 아니고 어 이렇게 제시하시는 대로 했지만 어 굉장히 처음부터 거절을 많이 당했습니다. Um, so I didn't quite do what I wanted to do. I did uh, I followed his uh, directions or instructions. Um, but I was rejected a lot initially. So um for the whole score or for for that sequence or 전부 다 everything <laughs> <laughs> and and when you get rejected by director bong does he do it gently does he do it harshly ah. how does he give feedback 정말 정말 친절하게 <laughs> 거절하십니다 he rejects uh, in a very friendly manner so he, he'll say let's try something else or okay 그 그러면서 뭔가 여기는 어떤 감정 때문에 별로야 이렇게 아주 디테일하게 말씀해 주시는 경우가 많았습니다. So he would give an example um, saying this part because of certain emotion this doesn't work so well. So he would give sort of detailed examples to reject me. Okay. <laughs> Structured rejection. So with with this piece of music that we heard in the clip, which is such a great piece of music, um, and you might think it's sort of like real Baroque. So why choose um, to kind of compose as opposed to using some other music uh, that you might have used? Like I think elsewhere you used Handel, right? But here you've kind of gone for this semi-Baroque. Mm -hmm. What was the thinking behind that? 바로, 일단은 Baroque 음악이 아까 그 옥자의 발칸반도 음악처럼 우스꽝스럽기도 하고 우아하기도 하고 뭔가 슬플 때도 있고 즉 즐거울 때도 있고 이런 여러 가지 복잡한 감정이 그 발칸반도 음악하고도 비슷하다고도 생각했습니다. Uh, like the Balkan music um, used in Okja, uh, I thought Baroque music was also similar in that respect of ha having funny elements. Um, it's also elegant. Um, it's got sad emotions, joyfulness as well. Um, so the complex emotions are also in Baroque music. 그리고 그 제가 학교에서 음악을 배운 게 아니라 어, 여러 가지 찾아보면서 이 바로크 흉내를 내기 시작했습니다. 그래서 약간 그 가... 그 가난한 가족처럼 되어 버렸습니다. 이렇게 뭔가 우아하고 싶지만 뭔가 부족하고 뭔가 가짜 같은 그래서 이 음악을 바로크 음악이라고 썼지만 뭐 로맨틱 음악도 있고 코리안 폭스트롯도 있고 뭐 메탈리카도 있고 막 그렇습니다. Uh, because I didn't learn music um, in school, um, I did my own research to create this. So I ended up writing or mimicking this Baroque music to a pseudo-Baroque style. Um, so I was kind of like the poor family. Um, I wanted to be elegant, um, but something was missing. Something you know, was quite fake. Um, so I said I wrote this Baroque style music, but there's romance uh, period in it. There's Korean foxtrot, uh, even Metallica is in it. Yeah, that, that's part of the reason why I think it works so well, because 
the style is you're calling it pseudo baroque and the family are like a kind of suit well they're, they're sort of um impersonating who someone else so there's a sort of pseudo element to them too um one more question on all of these uh rejections that you, you were getting from director bond what happens to the um the music that uh, you compose but then he doesn't like do you ever reuse it um mm. 시도를 했는데 다 실패했습니다. 그래서 아 이분은 참 귀가 좋으신 분이구나라고 생각했습니다. Um, I tried, um, but it didn't really work. He and I thought, oh, he's got really good uh, ear for uh, ear for music and sound. So you, you, so you say you tried to reuse them, but he 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 found you out. <laughs> I got, I got Yes. Okay. <laughs> So they're just waiting for uh, you know your greatest hits collection in a, a few decades time. Okay. 그래서 oh. 그 하나 그 이제 물에 물에 가족 그 가난한 가족이 다 잠기는 씬이 있었는데 분명히 좋다고 하셨는데 다음번에는 안 좋다고 하셔 가지고 OST에 그게 Water Ocean이라는 곡인데 그 거절당한 곡을 Water Ocean Again이라고 그냥 넣어버렸습니다. Uh, so there's a scene where the poor family gets drowned in water, and initially he said it was good, and then he said he didn't like it. So um, in the original soundtrack, um, this piece is called uh, Water Ocean, uh, which was rejected, but we put it, uh, I put it in there, um, calling it Water Ocean Again. <laughs> nice. Well, um... Just to put you guys on notice, we're going to pause for Q&A, maybe in one question's time. So think about um, questions you might ask on what we've been talking about or, or, or other things. Um, but before we go to that, I just wanted to ask about a couple more musical things in, um, in Parasite, which I thought were really interesting. Firstly, the, um, uh, the scene which uses a musical saw, right, which is pretty weird choice. Um, and then, obviously, we've we've already spoken about um, you using Balkan brass music in Okja. W when do these like slightly offbeat choices um, feel right? Like, why not uh, use something more standard? Why decide? Okay, this is the time for the musical saw. Uh, 일단 봉준호 감독님이 정상적인 걸 싫어하십니다. 어, 그리고 화면이 그렇게 만들게 만듭니다. 여기 나오는 사람들이 다 이상하기 때문에 그렇지만 그래서 뭔가 이렇게 레이어가 있는 거죠. 굉장히 해맑고 알프스 소년의 합창 같은 곡인데 뮤지컬 소가 귀신 소리를 낸다. 이런 어프로치를 해보, 할 수밖에 없게 만드는 지점이 있습니다. 항상. Um. So director Bong, he doesn't like normal stuff. So <laughs> that's where it starts. Um, and the scenes kind of make it make sense um, because all the people here you saw are strange people. Um, so the, uh, there's layering elements of that. Um, so in some ways it's like the bright um, Alps uh, boys choir sort of um, going on with um, eerie uh, musical saw backgrounds. I mean, that sort of makes sense in this approach. Yeah, it's like children's music, children's singing, isn't it? And, and did you have to find someone who played the musical saw? 제가 어렸을 때그그 그 장준의 감독의 델리카트슨이라는 영화를 봤는데 거기서 첼로와 뮤지컬 소가 합주를 하는 장면을 보고 사랑에 빠져서 그걸 배웠습니다. Uh, when I was younger, I watched a film called Delicatessen um, by Chang jun -il, and there was a scene where um, there was a co collaboration of cello and the musical saw, so I learned to pick it up myself. So it's you playing? On the, oh, nice. And um, are you going to play it tomorrow at your concert? Oh, it's a shame. I thought you might have it for us. Okay, well, um, we can talk more about some of your more esoteric uh, musical choices uh, throughout, but I want to turn the conversation out uh, at this point for the first time. So there are ushers with mics. So if you want to ask a question, 
put your hand up and I'll, oh, there's lots of questions. Okay, great. Sometimes people are shy. Let's go, the first person I saw was you, right at the back there, so let's go here. Uh, it's been 26 years since I've uh, made paid music. 굉장히 아날로그입니다. 그래서 저는 일단 피아노나 기타를 잡습니다. 그리고 계속 화면을 보면서 improvise를 합니다. Uh, so I'm very analog, you might say. Um, so I have uh, either I sit at the piano or hold the guitar and just look at the screen and improvise. 그래서 그걸 반복하고 반복하고 반복하다가 뭔가 좋다고 생각되는 게 있으면 그걸 캡처합니다. So I repeat and repeat and repeat, and when it comes to a point where I think this is okay, this is good, and then I capture that. 그리고 적습니다. Then I write it. 그래서 저의 기본 작업 방식은 항상 똑같기 때문에 디렉션이 있거나 없거나 어 임프로비제이션입니다. 그래서 디렉션이 있으면 그 방향으로 임프로비제이션을 하고 없으면 그냥 제 마음대로 합니다. 그러다가 망하는 경우도 많습니다. Um, the, so the basic structure of how I work is the same, whether there's direction or not. Um, it's improvi improvisation. So whether there is some guide or direction, I improvise towards that. And if there isn't any, then I uh, just do what I want. Um, so either way. Um, but then doing that uh, sometimes uh, comes to an epic failure. <laughs> yeah, because I can understand first question. You were talking about this, uh, putting the film on and then impro improvising. But when you only have a script, you just do the same, but think about the scene in your head? 그렇게 하지만, 어, 그렇게 합니다. 그렇게 해야 하고, 스크립트 단계부터 음악을 만들어야만 합니다. 그래서 계속 뭔가를 반복해서 만들어 봐야 진짜 화면이 나왔을 때 내가 생각했던 감정이 맞, 맞는지 안 맞는지 맞춰볼 수 있습니다. Yes, I do that, and I have to do it that way. Um, I have to have what is, um, how it is um, from the script stage and repeating. So when it comes to a point where I can see the scene, then I can match it to the emotions that I feel, um, whether uh, it fits to the emotions that I created in my music. 그런데 재밌는 건 스크립트 단계에서 쓴 음악이 진짜 영화에 쓰여진 적이 단한 번도 없습니다. What's fun is that all the music that I created at the script stage it was never uh, never made it to the film, the actual films. That does sound fun. Oriosil te buta inga chonen sashirun umagul mandanun saram budanan tinnan saram il te to hengbukamida. 그래서 저는 굉장히 많이 듣습니다. 그래서 저도 저는 극장에 의자에 앉아 있을 때가 좋고 영화를 볼 때가 좋습니다. Uh, from a young age, um, rather than creating music, I'm happier listening to music. Um, so I listen to a lot of music, and I really like it when I'm sitting in the cinema and watching films. 그래서 그 굉장히 많이 듣는 게그 여기저기 이렇게 박혀 있다가 어느 순간 이상한 것으로 변질이 되어서 튀어나오는 것 같습니다. 그런 것들이 제 음악의 특징인 것 같고 딱히 장르를 생각하지는 않는데 뭔가 그렇게 됩니다. Uh, so listening to music, a lot of different music, I think they sort of stick to different parts of me. Um, and then they pop out. So I think that's the specifics of my music. Um, I don't really think about genres, um, but I think that's um, how it comes about. Yeah, 
저한테 더 자신 있는 언어라고 생각이 들고요. 그리고 느리고 어두운 음악이 comfortable 한것 같습니다. Um, so not really comfortable per se, but um, I'd say piano is my language, um, and I'm confident, more confident in the language of piano than Korean language itself. Um, and the slow, dark music, I think I'm most comfortable in that. I remember you saying earlier you hated piano. You've changed your tune. <laughs> I'm sure you've, uh, you came to love it. Yeah. There's so many different instruments out there, but I can only really do a piano, guitar, drum as well. Um, there's just so many different instruments in the world. I feel like you're being a bit modest because we uh, talked about the musical saw. Oh. And, uh, and also, uh, th th spoilers, but Squid Game. Don't you play the recorder on that? Yeah, so so what's next? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there might be room for another interesting instrument, but perhaps oh. you can make a suggestion. Oh, <laughs> but... 저는 전통 악기들에 대한 굉장히 리스펙 가지고 있습니다. 그것을 제가 하고 싶다기보단 그 언어와 제 언어를 합쳐서 뭔가를 해보고 싶은 꿈은 가장 많이 있고 그것을 한국 전통 예술과 하고 있습니다. Um, I respect uh, traditional musical instruments a lot, um, and it's not something that I want to try, but it's more um, that I want to combine that language with my musical language. Um, so it's my dream to do that. And, I'm, and I want to do that with um, Korean traditional music. Oh. Well, that's a great segue, actually, because um, uh, we're going to move off cinema briefly and talk a little bit about some of uh, Jung jae ils work uh, for other mediums. And the first of those uh, is her work um, for opera. So we're actually going to see a performance of the piece that's written for the opera, but not actually in the opera, but um, we'll still get a sense of it. And there are some Korean traditional elements uh, in it, I think, which we can go on to discuss. So let's start with this clip from um, Trojan Women, the opera. <laughs> Please tell us about um, some of the Korean traditional elements that are uh, deployed in that piece. Pansori라는 그, 그, 한 사람이 하는 오페라가 있습니다. 보통 3시간에서 4시간 정도 하는데, 한 사람이. 어, 
굉장히 독특한 창법입니다. 그리고 한국의 가장 핵심적인 보컬 스타일이기도 합니다. 판소리. Uh, Pansori is a one-person opera which goes on for usually three to four hours and it's got a very unique style of um, singing vocalization and it's a very specific Korean style of music. Spain's flamenco, Pakistan's guali, and that's what I think is one person, opera, 연극의 요소를 집어넣어서 여러 사람이 하고 텍스트도 트로잔 위멘이라는 그리스의 비극을 바탕으로 한국 전통의 판소리를 만들게 된 것입니다. Uh, so it's uh, similar to in some ways the Spanish flamingo or the Pakistani kuali. Um, and it's for one person but uh, we made it theatrical uh, with lots more people. Um, we used the Greek uh, tragedy Trojan women um, to create this. 그렇게 만들게 됐어요. Yes, it was made like that. And um, when do you choose to deploy these Korean influences in your work? Because I guess there's not so much of it in some of the film scores we just discussed, but in this piece, it's it's central. Uh, 한국에 그이 이것을 창극이라고 하는데. 코리안 오페라, 트래디셔널 오페라이고 그것을 하는 집단이 있습니다. 창극단. 거기서 커미션을 받았습니다. 그래서 그 이런 오페라를 만들게 된 것입니다. 국립 창극단. Uh, so I was commissioned by the Korean traditional opera music. Um, I'm sure you had to. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it was created because of that. But presumably it was a pleasure to to, it, was it the first time, or I'm sure you've previously used Korean influences in your work? Uh, 10, 그 traditional musicians 친구가 많았고 그런 이렇게 같이 Western music 하고 합치는 일을 많이 해왔습니다. 그러다가 점점 자연스럽게 traditional도 저의 언어가 되게 되었습니다. 그러다가 이 오페라를 만나게 된 거예요. Um, so when I, uh, since when I was a teenager and before, um, I had friends with lots of, uh, I, I was friends with uh, people who were uh, studying or doing uh, traditional Korean music. Um, and I was working a lot with mixing the two uh, music, so the Korean traditional and the Western music. And then gradually, uh, the Korean traditional music also became my language. Can you remember, um, I guess, the first time you were really moved by Korean traditional music because you were talking about Metallica so presumably it was post Metallica but but when when did it really come and, and hit you? Uh, 현대음악 페스티벌이 서울에 있었는데 그게 제가 한 12살 때였습니다 현대음악이라고 하면 굉장히 난해한 그 슈터카우젠 같은 그런 음악을 하는 페스티벌이었습니다 Contemporary. Yeah, contemporary. Uh, contemporary classic. Okay, so when I was 12, uh, there was a music festival, a contemporary classic music festival, uh, where it was very complex. Um, Stuckhausen? Um, yes. 그런데 그것의 개막작이 그 한국의 가장 오래된 음악인 종, 어, 그 궁중에서 하는 음악을 했습니다. 가장 오래된 음악을 가장 아방가르드한 페스티벌에서 보게 됐는데 그때 다른 우주에서 온 음악을 듣는 그런 느낌을 받았습니다. And the opening act for that festival was the music that was played in the old the oldest music which is um, palace music um, and I heard the most traditional music in the most avant-garde festival. Um, so I felt the music from then was from a different universe. 아무런 우리가 알고 있는 화성과 멜로디는 없고 템포도 없었습니다. 어떻게 이런 음악이 있었을까 하는 생각을 하게 됐습니다. Uh, so the chords or the tempo of the music that we know wasn't there, and I thought, how could music like this exist? You sound like a very cultured twelve-year-old. Yeah. So you went to a festival. Uh, 
of contemporary classical music, stock carols and etc. And the first act was a um, the Korean royal court music, like right. ancient music, and you were moved by that. Wow. And have do you, is there a work where you've deployed that influence in your work? Uh, Jane Goodall Baxan Nimago, Kihu, ah, Kihu Pionae Tian Hei Rieso, Umagel, to commission bucket in Munde, Kogi, the Jane Goodall Baxan Nime narration it rog Hago, E. Kihu Rieso, Hengdongi and Dan Umagel Mandros Day, Kude Umagel, all the gates in Nida. Preso Kogos Hangagi. Um, I was commissioned um, to uh, create music um, for a summit that had Dr. Jane Goodall, Goodall um, for a conversation about climate change. Um, and I thought to use uh, older music uh, for that. What's that called, the piece? Uh, wake Up Call. And what was it about the kind of old, you know, traditional music, which I guess is quite... Um, without it, it, the changes are quite imperceptible, aren't they? With that music, what was it about that which was uh, suitable for the topic? Did you feel? Uh, 일단은 그 굉장히 고대 음악부터 시작해서 그 이제 현대적인 음악으로 넘어가고 이제 어떤 메시지를 담은 음악으로 넘어가게 되는 그런 과정이 이 우리가 굉장히 이 지구에서 살아온 지구를 해서 살아온 이야기에 그 맞고 지금 우리가 다, 다 맞닥뜨리고 있는 위기 그리고 그 제인 고달 박사님께서 주신 메시지와 맞는다고 생각했습니다. Um, the story um, starting from prehistoric music moving to the modern music um, I thought that process kind of fit to the story of uh, human life on earth and to the message that Jane Goodall had. Um, and I just want to add um, the summit, uh, that music had uh, Jane Goodall's narration in it. I missed that bit earlier. Narration. Yeah. That sounds like an interesting piece. Um, just before we uh, move to our next clip, um, how was it writing for an opera? Was that different to writing for a film? Or do you approach it in a similar way? First, there is a text, and there is a the opera is different. 그리고 이제 가수들을 위해서 음악을 만들어야 되기 때문에 그것이 굉장히 다른 어프로치이긴 합니다. Um, so I have the text first and it's adding music to that. So opera writing is different and it's written for singers, so the approach is different. And um, the director of that piece, um, who was Singaporean, I think? Yeah, yeah. Wong Kensen. Wong Kensen. Uh, what was he like to work with? What, what direction did, what dialogue did you have about the music with him? Uh, 외국인이지만 한국 전통에 대해 가장 잘 이해하고 있었고 이상한 연극적인 요소를 넣지 않고 그 한국 음악의 정수를 보여주자 해서 어, 어떤 때는 무반주로 노래를 하기도 하고 어떤 때는 악기 하나와만 연주 어, 노래를 하기도 하고. 그런 여러 가지 실험들을 같이 했습니다. Um, so even though he was not Korean, um, he had this deep understanding of Korean traditional music. Um, and instead of using theatrical elements, we thought let's use the direct uh, Korean um, traditional musical elements. Sometimes there would be no um, ensemble to it. Uh, sometimes there'd be just the one um, instrument to the singer and so on. 그래서 어떤 반주가 있을 때는 들리지 않던 목소리의 감정이나 선율들이 더 가슴에 강력하게 와닿는 그런 경험을 했습니다. So when there was no accompaniment, um, the missing um, emotions that you couldn't quite hear when there was accompaniment, um, I felt the experience of hearing those elements, melody, the emotions and so on. Quite strong emotions. Well, I think we better move on to the, the next clip. Um, so we've spoken about you working with film directors, opera directors, and now this is a piece of work that you wrote for a contemporary artist. And it's actually from the same concert, but the original piece um, was for an art installation. So let's watch the clip and then reflect on that.
Powerful stuff, and I love the kind of um, electro element sort of bubbling up there, um, which is something we haven't spoken so much about. We've talked about metal and punk and Korean traditional, but can you talk a little bit about um, your relationship with electro music, electronic music? Exotic한 정도로만 쓰고 있습니다. 그냥 네. Um, I don't actively use electronic music. Um, I use it uh, exotically. Because um, uh, some of the kind of uh, material in Okja, for example, in in the um, the slaughterhouse is very kind of like. Uh, I guess it, I'd call it electronic. I don't know if you'd use that term. And that that piece, uh, you're kind of um, recreating on the piano this sort of very dense, intense feeling. And um, I just wondered what what kind of artist inspired you to find that sound. 굉장히 많긴 한데요. 어그 앰비언트 음악에서 많이 영향을 받은 것 같습니다. 브라이언 이너 같은 사람들 그리고 일렉트로닉 뮤지션이라기보다는 어, 류이치 사카모토가 했던 그런 일렉트로닉한 요소들 그런 곳에서 영향을 많이 받았다고 생각합니다. Lots of artists, um, ambient musicians, um, and such as Brian Eno, Eno, um, and uh, not electronical, uh, but uh, elements from Yuichi, Yuichi Sakamoto as well. So if I pronounce that wrong, Yuichi, yeah, Sakamoto. Who's a, a amazing film composer of, of his own? Um, I'm a bit in danger of losing control of the time, so I think we're going to move on uh, to to talk about some of your other film scores, and we're going to do Q and A just after that. So you'll still get some chance for questions. So uh, we're going to the next clip is from um, a more recent film, 2022, with a Japanese director. Um, Hirokazu Koreyera and it's called Broker and uh, yeah we're about to see a, a lovely scene from that film Usong이름은누가지었었어? 아는 파일럿? 둘이 형제 같네. 
예, 예, 보세요. 저희 약속 시간 한두 시간 땡겼으면 합니다만 12시에 뵙죠. 예, 예, 예. 알겠습니다. 예. I neglected to summarize the film for anyone who hasn't seen it, but uh, it's a film about um, a woman who regrets giving up her baby to a, uh, a baby box outside a church and decides to sort of uh, come back for him and work with the, the brokers who are attempting to sell him to a, on the black market, adoption market in, in Korea. So some of you might have watched that and thought, oh, they're just going on a nice journey on the train, very nice. No. <laughs> it's, got, it's deeper, it's deeper than that, and it's fantastic. <laughs> so I think a lot of our audience would like to hear about working with um, director Hirokazu. Um, I, maybe a good place to start is how different, how he's different to director Bong. Hirokazu is a documentary that he 아주 꽉 짜여져 있는 봉준호 감독과 달리 현장에서의 그 즉흥성도 강조하시는 분이고 조금 더 자연스럽고 음악을 많이 안 쓰시는 분입니다. Uh, director Hirokazu um, started off with documentary filmmaking. So uh, unlike director Bong who is very uh, structured, um, he's more natural um, stresses on improvising improvisation and sometimes doesn't use music. And you said director Bong would never say, make it like this artist. Would director Hirokazu ever, ever give you musical references? 사실 조금 놀랐던 거는 처음에 이제 리딩을 하러, 대본 리딩을 하러 갔을 때 사람들이, 아 사람들이래. 그 감독님께서 제 음악을 다 모아다가 그냥 본인 맘대로 그 사운드 트랙처럼 넣어서 들려주셨습니다. Uh, what was surprising uh, when I went to the script reading, uh, the director had all of my music and he just was playing them like a soundtrack. 굉장히 창피하기도 했는데 이렇게 아무 말도 하지 않고 본인은 이런 걸 원한다라고 하시는 것 같아서 조금 놀랐습니다. Uh, it was quite embarrassing in a way for me, but um, it was kind of his way of saying, this is the kind of music I want. So um, I was a bit surprised that, by that approach. Do you know, did he say um, why he uh, reached out to you? I guess he'd seen your work with director Bong or another reason? Um, I was going to ask, but I couldn't ask. <laughs> it's a mystery. Um, and I realize we've been talking a lot about the relationship between you and the director, but when it comes to making uh, great music for film, are there other important people, the editor, or, or I don't know, other people involved in the music that we're that we should be giving credit to? 사실 영화를 만드는 게참 좋은 것 중에 하나는 제가 사람을 만나는 거를 굉장히 조금 무서워하는 경향이 있는데. 영화는 제 스튜디오에서 감독님하고 저하고만 만나면 돼서 너무 좋아하는 작업이기도 합니다. A good thing about filmmaking is I'm sometimes scared of meeting people. So what is good about making films is that um, it, I can just have conversation with the director in my studio. So it is quite a personal relationship with you and the director and not too many other people. Oh. Good to know. Um, I think we we should move on shortly, but um, I just want to ask a little bit specifically about the music. Um, the topic of the film is quite heavy, as we say, you know, about uh, quite an emotional topic, and it would probably be easy to overdo the music, like make it too schmaltzy or or emotional. So, how do you hold yourself back? How do you set limits on yourself, or does the director do that? 어, 저는 코레다의 모든 작품을 사랑하는 팬으로서 그가 어떤 작품을 만들어 왔는지 알기 때문에 음악이 함부로 영화를 침범하지 않기 위해서 굉장히 조심했습니다. Um, I'm a fan of uh, Hirokazu, director Hirokazu, and I watched all of his work. So I know not to invade um, any of his work with music. 음악은 단지 
이 씬에서 저 씬으로 넘어가는 브릿지 역할을 해주길 바랐고 딱한 군데에서만 드라마에 도움을 주는 음악을 쓰게 됐습니다. Uh, so music was used as a bridging role, moving from one scene to another, and there was one, uh, there was only one point where it was used as a dramatic element. 그래서 어떤 장면은 제가 음악을 빼자고 한 것도 있고, 어떤 장면은 감독님께서 음악을 빼자고 한 것도 있고, 그러, 그렇게 굉장히 조심스럽게 드라마를 해치지 않게 그 감독님이 의도하시는 바를 음악이 덧붙이거나 방해하지 않도록 조심스럽게 작업했습니다. Um, so some scenes I suggested to eliminate music. Uh, some scenes the director was I wanted to eliminate music. Um, so we were very careful not to um, ruin the dramatic elements of the film and make sure that the message that the director wanted to convey uh, was meaningful. Um, so sometimes we would add or uh, remove music to create that. Well, I think we'll have to move off director Hirokazu because one of the big pieces of work that you've done that we haven't yet talked about in detail um, is Squid Game, television show, not a film. So apologies for raising it in the, the British Film Institute. But uh, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Then we'll do some Q&A. And then I think the last clip will, will play us out. But Squid Game, how did um, director Huang come to you? And what was it like doing TV instead of film? 황강, 황동혁 감독님도 저는 팬이었고 그, 그걸 알고 있던 저희의 그 매니저와 스쿠이드 게임의 제작자가 절친이었습니다. 그래서 두 사람이 만나보면 어떨까 하고 이렇게 만남을 주선해 주셨습니다. Um, director Huang, I'm a fan of his works, and my manager knew that, and my manager is actually best friends with the producer of Squid Game, so they thought, oh, why don't we get them to meet up? 그런데 영화한 영화한 줄 알았는데 시리즈라서 시리즈를 해본 적이 없어서 굉장히 겁을 먹었고 굉장히 많은 준비를 해야만 했습니다. Um, I initially thought it was a film. But uh, turned out it was a TV series, which I haven't worked on before, so I was quite scared about it. Um, so I had to do a lot of pre uh, preparation for it. Remember when we were talking about other people who were important to the process? Sounds like you should have said thank you to your manager for getting you the Squid Game connection. <laughs> and maybe she's here tonight. <laughs> but um, I know you work with some other musicians on that uh, soundtrack for a few elements. Why was that? Was that simply because of the length? Or did you did you think I need these guys on this, or did the director make that decision? Uh, 제가 그이 아홉 개 에피소드를 완성하기 위해서는 제가 할수 없는 음악들도 필요하다고 생각했고 이게 하나로 이어지면서도 각각의 유니크한 지점들이 있어야 되고 또한 지루하지 않아야 된다고 생각했기 때문에 어, 두 사람의 작곡가를 더 함께 처음으로 두 사람 아, 제가 아닌 작곡가와 작업을 해보게 되었습니다. Uh, because there were nine episodes, um, I thought uh, it was needed um, that I uh, that I there was some music that I couldn't do um, and not make it boring and have some unique points, but also all joined up together. Um, so it was the first time um, working with two additional composers other than myself. Did you ever disagree with them, or was it pretty harmonious? Uh, 굉장히 잘했다고 생각하고 여러분이 알고 있는 그 굉장히 유명한 테마가 있습니다. 딴딴딴딴딴딴딴 이게 그 23라는 작곡가의 작품입니다. Uh, I think uh, it works very well, um, and there's the very famous theme that you know. Um, I won't sing that bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was the work of the uh, composer 23. Yeah, that's a great. So when you heard that, you thought, yeah, amazing. Or you were like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> 너무 좋아서 감독님께 들렸, 들렸더니 감독님도 너무 좋아하셨습니다. Um, I really liked it, so when I played it to the director, he also really liked it. 
근데 그 감독님이 너무 좋아하셔서 거기 나오는 이 가면을 쓴 사람들이 나올 때 그냥 무조건 그 음악이 나오게 해보자라고 하셨습니다. Um, the director liked it so much that um, he suggested um, every time those masked people come out, let's play that music. Uh, 작곡을 하는데 가장 유용한 도구입니다. 그리고 제가 피아노 피아노는 가장 완성된 음악에 가까운 악기이기 때문에. 어, 작곡을 하는데 가장 유용한 도구입니다. 그래서 so, 사랑에 빠졌습니다. Uh, piano is the most useful uh, instrument for composing, and I think um, it's the most refined um, instrument as well. So um, yeah, it's a very useful tool for composing. 작곡을 작곡을 본격적으로 해보자라고 생각했던 지점인 것 같습니다. I think it's the point when I set to do composing uh, for real. 대충 몇살 때? 열살 때? Ten. It sounds like Thank you've got you. a child who doesn't want to play the piano or something. <웃음> What age are they going to play? 베스트 <웃음> 어드바이스는 그본 감독님이 얘기하신 가장 개인적인 것이 가장 창의적인 것이다 마틴 스콜세스 uh, 인상 받았습니다. Um, so the best advice was director Bong's um, quite uh, impressive um, speech by uh, Martin Scorsese. What's most personal is the most creative. 그리고 저에게 나쁜 조언은 없었던 것 같습니다. 다 제가 곱씹을 만한 조언이었고, 네. I don't think I had any worst bad advice. Um, everything it was something that I could mull over on. 항상 처음에 들을 때는 싫다가도 계속 생각해 보면 아 그렇지 이렇게 해야 되겠구나라는 생각이 들 때가 저는 굉장히 많습니다. Uh, at the beginning, I wouldn't like the sound of it, but then thinking back over it, reflecting on it, I think, oh yes, yeah, it maybe should be like that. And I had lots of moments like that. Actually, 끝까지 그냥 해 그냥 매달리는 수밖에 없다고 저는 생각 아 저의 경우에는 그렇습니다. 어. 끝까지 매달리다 보면 언젠가 풀린다는 희망을 가지고 하는데 이제 저에게는 그 방법밖에 없는 것 같습니다. Um, I hold on to it and I cling on to it uh, till the end, thinking and hoping that I, I will overcome it by just clinging on to it. Uh, that's at least my experience, and I think that's the only way I overcome them. 그리고 어, 마감일. 마감일이 가장 큰 영감입니다. Uh, and then deadline. Deadlines are my best inspirations. <웃음> 사실 제가 감히 조언할 입장은 아닌 것 같은데 어. 심사 숙고를 하라고 얘기를 해주고 싶고요. 어, 굉장히 끈질기고 즐겁게 하지 않으면 너무 너무 버티기 힘들기 때문에 심사 숙고 하라고 좀 전해주고 싶습니다. Uh, so I don't think um, I'm in the position to give an advice, um, but I'd say really think about it. Um, if it is really difficult to um, continue, um, so it's really difficult. So just really, really think about it. Think about it a lot. Uh, Bong Joon-ho 감독의 훌륭한 영화를 만드신 이병우라는 작곡가가 있습니다. 
그의 음악에서 영화의 어법에 대해서 많이 배웠고요. 특히 괴물이라는 영화를 봤을 때 원래 알던 형이었는데 그래서 음악만 들었을 때뭐 이렇게 이상한 음악이 있냐고 생각을 했는데 영화 안에서 그 음악을 들으니까 너무 훌륭한 음악이 되어서 아 영화 음악이란 이런 거구나 라고 배우게 되었습니다. 제 컴포저 병우 리 or 이병우 um, who worked with director Bong as a composer um, I learned the semantics of film music through him um, I already knew him beforehand but um, for the music he made for the host um, when I listened to the music on its own I thought what strange music um, but then when I watched it um, alongside the music uh, watched the film I thought this works so brilliantly with the film so I learned a lot from him through that 어, 다 어려웠는데 왜냐하면은 제가 특별히 기생충은 많이 헤맸습니다. 그래서 감독님이 엄청난 인내심을 발휘했는데 어, 매 음악이 다 어려웠고요. 근데 특히 아까 들으셨던 음악은 길이가 7분에 달하는 음악이어서 7분짜리를 여덟 번 만들면 굉장히 힘들거든요. 그런 점이 힘들었습니다. Um, everything was a challenge. Um, but for Parasite, I was lost a lot. Um, so director, the director was extremely patient. Um, and each music was different. Um, and the music you heard from earlier, the clip, um, so that music was seven minutes long. And making seven minutes music eight times is extremely challenging. So. Okay, well... I think we're going to have to say goodbye, and we're going to do it via means of a clip, which sort of mashes together some of uh, Jung's um, uh, big hits. Uh, so uh, it's a clip from an award show, and we hear a bit of Squid Game, and we hear a bit of Parasite. And it might not be so different, I guess, to what you could hear tomorrow if you go and see Jung at the Barbican, um, which uh, will obviously be the place to see him, because he'll be playing with the London Symphony Orchestra some of his, uh, some of his music. So. Let's watch this last clip and, um, and then say our goodbyes. Thank you everyone for coming. You can see more from tomorrow at the Barbican if you want to. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sophia, for translating, and thank you to the BFI for hosting.